Hi everyone. Good morning. In today's video, we are going to cover how to build your OBI or OAC RPD from scratch. So as you can see on my screen here, I have a blank RPD opened uh, in front of me and I'm going to start building the physical BMM and presentation layer. Now, before uh, moving forward, let me quickly brief you about the uh, meaning or the significance of these three layers that you see on my screen. So the physical layer is a representation of objects on your database. So whatever uh, objects, facts, dimensions, or tables that you create uh, in your database, they will be imported in your physical uh, layer that you can see over here. Once that is done, you do a, you do certain steps here and then start building the BMM layer. Now BMM layer is basically uh, where you create, build all your uh, star schema modeling. You do some customization, create some columns uh, that is ultimately uh, going to be visible to the uh, end users in your presentation layer. Once it is done, you basically then drag and drop into the presentation layer and presentation layer is basically what the user sees in your OBI or OAC screen. Okay, so uh, without wasting further time, let's start building the RPD. So the first thing you do is you uh, import the database tables in your physical layer or physical uh, schema or whatever you call it. So you go here, file, import metadata. You select OCI call interface. Now here you need to be very careful uh, in, on the format what you give for data source name. So for simplicity, what I have done is because I am using my local database, I have already uh, you know created this DNS which I am pasting over here. You need to ensure that you follow the same format, otherwise uh, the the steps will not go through. Then you have to give the username and password. So I have created some dummy user. I'm giving the password. As you can see, it this, now you can see table keys and foreign keys or other options that you want to import from your database. If you don't give the DNS name correctly, this screen will not appear. You will get some uh, other kind of error. So now because I just want to import my tables, so I'll uncheck keys and foreign key. I'll click next. Now here, I'll go and I'll select uh, OAS user. Under that, I'll select the tables that I, that I have created for this particular uh, demo. And I'm click. I'm selecting the four tables, and I'm just select. I'm just importing it. Okay. So you can give any specific name to the connection pool, or I'm just giving test. Depending on uh, depending on how much data it is there, or how many objects you are trying to uh, you know uh, import. It could take certain time, but uh, as you can see here, because I'm importing only four objects, it was pretty quick. And then I'm clicking finish. Once it is done, uh, what I'll do is I'll change the name of the display folders. So I'm giving demo. Click OK. If I expand this, I see the connection pool and I see the user. And under that, I see the objects that are created. Okay. Now, uh, one thing you need to understand while building the star schema is you need to have one fact and uh, I mean, you can have as many facts you want, but you need to have a, at least minimum one fact and certain dimensions. Uh, once once uh, you have this, so in my uh, example here, the sales is uh, sales table is my fact and customer location product are my dimensions. So now the next thing to do is you create an alias. Why do you need to create an alias? I'll, I'll explain you uh, as we move along. So you can right click create an alias. Fact sales. Okay. Then similarly, I'm creating an alias of the uh, dimensions as well. Dim custom. Oh, sorry to, uh, yeah, correct. Um, then location. And the last one is dim product. Perfect. Now we have created an alias. Now the next thing to do is uh, create a physical diagram. So in a physical diagram, what you need to do is you need to join uh these tables so i'm selecting fact 
customer location product and physical diagram select objects only okay let me just rearrange it for the simplicity purpose and then you need to say uh, click on this icon new join you need to drag from a fact to a certain dimension okay so what you need to do in that, that case is uh, you need to select a proper key from your dimension that is referenced in your fact so generally uh, the ideal way is uh, you select a row width from your dimension which is referenced as, as a certain width in your fact so in my case a row width of a, a customer dimension is joined with the customer width of a sales fact so that is how i'm joining it similarly for location i'm selecting the row width of a location with the location width of a fact and lastly row width of a product i'm joining with the product width of my fact now this is done uh, so i'm now done with my uh, physical uh, diagram now coming to the earlier point which i was emphasizing on creating an alias so sometimes you might come across a situation where you know you need to reference the same tape same database tables for multiple uh, data modeling purposes in that case uh, you can't directly join the underlying database table uh, to a uh, to from underlying fact table to the dimension like for example in this case dw sales to dw product so a recommended uh, approach is you create an alias and you do the joining so for example now if i need to reference customer dimension again for some other modeling purpose i don't need to worry about whether i need to use the this dim customer or not i can create an, another alias of this uh, dw customer uh, for example a classic example is location so uh, when you think of a location there are multiple locations right you have sale uh, you have built to location you have ship to location so what will happen is if you simply do a join between d location uh, dw location and dw sales how the bi server will differentiate whether it is it should be a ship to location or build to location so in that case what you do is uh, if you have a simple single uh, location dimension you create different aliases of it like a, a dim ship to a dim build to and then join it accordingly using different columns in your fact because in your fact it will be there will be different references of ship to build to invoice to something like that so uh, i hope you get the point on the significance of creating an alias now what i will do is i have selected these columns and i'm just i, say I have selected these objects and i'm dragging it to bmm layer Get is not letting me. One second. I'll just let me just simply. Okay. Now I'll delete the underlying tables. Okay. So once you drag it uh, into BMM layer, by default, uh, the RPD first makes it. Uh, uh, with uh, disabled okay this disabled is checked and you can see it with the symbol that uh, that is over uh, that is over here okay so what this tells is because you are still building the rpd that means your uh, data modeling is not yet done and the rpd is not ready to uh, deploy to the presentation server okay uh, another thing you will notice that once you drag the objects to the presentation layer uh, sorry the logical layer or the bmm layer you will see the, uh, the way it is differentiated so for example you see here there is no asset differentiation in the symbols between dim and fact but the moment you uh, bring it down to your bmm layer there is a distinction so you see here fact cells is represented with this uh, different icon than the dims okay now the next step, uh, once you drag it over here the next step is to create a logical dimension so what what we will do is uh, customer create logical dimension now there are two uh, types of options that you get here label based hierarchy and the parent child hierarchy if the requirement in your case is to create a parent child hierarchy then you should select this option otherwise uh, generally we uh, we use a level based hierarchy where there are certain levels uh, we define so let me create a level based hierarchy here okay and i'm going to give it name as customer now whenever you create a 
time dimension, you have to select this option. Or if you want to create a ragged and skipped levels, uh, you can select different options appropriately. For now, I'm just selecting ragged and skipped. Although the data in my database is not qualifying for ragged and skipped, but uh, as, as a standard practice, generally I uh, ticked both these boxes. But if, if the data in your database is qualifying for ragged and skipped level, then you should ensure that you know you are only selecting on the appropriate one. Similarly, I'm creating new logical dimension. I give them as location. So now the logical dimensions are done. Uh, then the next steps basically to rename the column. So as you can see the columns, uh, all, if you go to the physical layer, the columns are as they are in your database, okay? But if you think from a end user perspective, they would not understand what is DT, what is weird, and you know, what is this underscore and all. So we need to make it more presentable and more user friendly because same objects will be carried forward in your presentation layer. And like I mentioned, presentation layer is the representation of uh, how the data and the objects, will, how the objects will be uh, visible to the end users in your OAC or OBI. So what you can quickly do is select this. Then there's an option to rename wizard. Okay, so change each occurrence of underscore into space I'm adding. I'm changing all text lowercase first letter of each word capital and then specified text. So for example, if you, if you can see, I have given DT, it will be changed to date. Okay. Another thing I do generally is because we are adding, because we are adding these two steps, uh, your width will become like this. So I, I want to keep it back to width. And then add what else I have AMT, right? So my AMT will become amount. Next. So you see here, it is, you know, it is giving you uh, the preview of how the columns will look like. Once I click finish, they are changed like this. Okay. Another thing then is uh, changing the aggregation layer. So if you see fact is more uh, a representation of your uh, numerical columns or the metrics. So the only important column I have here, which I need to be, I need to drag to presentation there is the sales amount. So what I will do first is I'll rename it as sales amount and the aggregation I'll change it as sum. Okay. Similarly, let me do the renaming for uh, customers also. Uh, what I will do is uh, I'll only rename the selected. Now I have already shown you how to uh, use the rename wizard. Now I also I will show you how to rename it manually in, in case you have just you just have to rename a couple of columns. So let me double click here. Active flag. And customer name because these are the only two columns which I will be interested in. Similarly for location, let me rename it to active flag and location name. When you actually do this activity for a certain project, you will realize that there will be a lot of columns that uh, you know you will need to uh, do this renaming for. So it is always better to use the rename wizard for it. Okay, now one last thing we need to do is define the content level. So if, if I expand the fact cells, go to fact cells, you see here the content level. This content level is very important for the BI server to uh, navigate and build the query. Okay, of course there are a lot of other uses why content level is important, but in a, in a, in a summary or in a nutshell, so you need to ensure that you know you define uh, the content level for the logical dimensions that you have created now because we have only three dimensions i have defined the content level here if you want to filter out the data 
like for example in some cases you will observe that your database has huge data like uh, 20 15 years of data but the business might not be interested in doing reporting on top of it so what you can do is based on the year you can use a filter here so what will happen is whenever a, a user runs a report this filter what you give here in the where clause will be automatically applied and the data will be filtered this is also useful you know in some cases where you want to reduce the performance of the physical query now that it is done let me enable this okay now your uh, logical model is done click on here uh, on the presentation layer new subject area so i'm giving the new subject area name as demo and what i will do now is i will only i'll select all these four tables here uh, and in the bmm layer and i will will drag it to my subject area okay one more thing you can do is uh, in the presentation layer you only keep the columns that you want to do the reporting on like for example weird creation date they may might not be relevant they might be relevant if you want to do some analysis from the physical data perspective so what i will do is i'll remove all the unwanted column from the presentation layer I'll click only the ones that I am interested in. So, for example, like I mentioned here, I will remove these three columns. Similarly, perfect. Okay. So now uh, my presentation layer is also ready. Before you deploy this RPD now, one thing you need to do is uh, you need to test the consistency. So you go to file, check global consistency, report only. Okay, now you see there are three errors here. Let's see what are the three errors. Presentation level has no display column. Okay, understand. So what one thing I forgot is uh, when you create this, uh, you need to at a cert, at a level, you need to specify the Okay, so what you do is you mention the number of elements is one, you go to key and the display I'm mentioning as customer name. Okay. Or what you do is you mention key and you give a different key for display. I'm giving display as customer name. I'm using this for display and checking this. Okay. Similarly, for location, I will again do the same thing. I will uncheck the display box. I will give display. You can give any name uh, when I'm clicking display. Similarly, for product. Okay, I'm doing it one key. I'm unchecking this display and display product name. Okay, what I need to do now is I'll need to redrag these uh, into the presentation. So I'll have to first delete it from the presentation layer. Okay, now what I will do is I'll drag these again so for example i'm dragging the customer here i'm dragging the location to location folder i'm dragging the product to product folder okay now let's check the consistency again see now consistency check didn't find any error warning and best practice violation so my rpd is uh, good to be deployed hope you have uh, enjoyed this video uh, if you have any questions around it please uh, drop them in the comments box and i will be happy to cover it in the next section thank you so much